hello everyone welcome back to our channel uh today we are going to take, do a video about taking off substructure work with a corner recess you remember we did another video about how to calculate the center line of a, a, a rectangle with a corner recess now we are going to do a very simple takeoff uh, which involves just a building with only walls it has no columns then uh, the section it's taken AA here uh, this section here it has only the wall and uh, the hardcore here the blinding and the concrete and the DPC uh, this one is not a complicated uh, stuff to take off and actually it will help all those students uh, who have been struggling with getting this concept so uh, we will start we will do this one it's a simple one whenever you're able to do this one which has only the walls now you can graduate to the one which has uh, different uh, types of walls maybe for the external walls is a bit deeper or a bit wider and also now you can go to the columns so don't pressurize yourself if you haven't uh, gotten the concept of taking off kindly just start with the simple diagrams that we give you once you know how to take off the simple ones go graduating go to a semicircle go to the one that has different uh, thicknesses now go to the cavity walls go to the columns like that so don't be discouraged if you have any struggles kindly just take your time um, and I'm here to encourage you in case you have any questions you can see that we are answering all your questions we are actually go through every comment that you make uh, we appreciate all your compliments thank you so much for those who love our videos we are so humbled uh, in case you you just want to compliment us kindly uh, write it in the comment section we appreciate and in case you have any uh, negative feedback about our videos also write we need your feedback that's how we improve so in case you find any mistake uh, or any error in our videos we are just human <laughs> can be just correct us and so that we can learn together anyway uh, we appreciate all your support we are appreciating you sharing our videos to your classmates and your classmates for those who are registering for the exams professional exams we wish you all the best we are here to assist you in case you, we can assist you in any way just reach us reach out to us for those who have asked asked questions and you have not responded to them sorry we have not ignored your questions we are here to answer them we hope we will be able to answer all your questions uh we are working on them uh, especially for those who have asked about the septic tank uh those who have asked about the bridges we are working on those videos and as you know it takes some time to come up with this presentation so we are here to assist and we are here to uh, help you succeed so in case you haven't subscribed to our channel kindly just check right now kindly subscribe that's how you support our channel so let's get started on today's video okay so when you whenever you're taking off uh-huh you, you there's a procedure that you follow uh when you're taking off so uh first of all we do site clearance then we excavate the oversight the oversight is the top soil you remember whenever you clear the site there's some vegetations that you have so those vegetation are held in place by the topsoil. Topsoil is the soil that supports uh, growth. So we shall remove all that topsoil because that soil is not good for construction. So we always excavate the topsoil. And if you see in your notes, you're always told topsoil is to what depth. So you'll excavate like this one you've been told, 150 millimeters. So you'll excavate that 150 millimeters. The next step after excavating the topsoil, you need to see whether you need to reduce the level. What do I mean when you say that we need to reduce the level? We reduce the level because the level where we lay the hard coal is always lower than the ground level so in case you have uh, removed the topsoil and still we have not got to the level where we need to lay the hard coal you know we lay the hard coal where the soil is now very stable all right so in case you we haven't got to that level we need to excavate again so that excavating again so that we can lead, reach the level where we lay the hard coal is called reducing the level so to find out to what depth we reduce the level what do we do uh, this one i'm going ahead but kindly note this 
uh, to find the level, the reduced level, how much you are reducing the level, you will take the total uh, depth of these layers that are here, the oversight concrete plus the ram blinding plus the hard core. If you add all those layers, eh, uh, the depth that it will give you, then you come and subtract the one above the ground, for example, uh, the one that is uh, hard call is 310 plus 75 maram blinding plus uh, 100 millimeters slab. What is the total? 100 plus 75, 175. 175 plus 310, 485. So for 85, you will come and see it's from here to below the hard call. Above the ground, you already have 200. For, 70, for 85, uh, minus uh 200 to 85 285 we removed 150 uh top swing so have we reached the level of hard call no so we shall find the difference for 85 minus 200 minus 150 and that's how we shall find the uh level of the reduced level okay now let's continue so after reducing the level, we shall excavate foundation trenches. Foundation trenches are usually excavated according to the drawing here. You see in the section, you can see the width of the foundation trench. Like here, it's 600. So we shall excavate 600 all around this building for the foundation trench. Then in the foundation trench, the why it is that wide, it's because of this concrete that we shall lay. Like here, we have already the blinding below the concrete. So we shall lay the blinding first or around uh -huh. we have given the depth of the blinding is 50 millimeters it's the thickness of the blinding then we shall do the oversight concrete this one the v vibrated reinforced concrete whose thickness is 150 millimeters okay so after the concreting we shall go to the uh, foundation walling we shall do the walls all around all around we shall build the wall then after the wall has been built of course we shall uh, return the soil eh? uh -huh. then they have the hard core laying the hard core we shall lay it and compact it then we have the mara blinding on top of the hard core to prevent the concrete from going inside the uh -huh, hard core the spaces to just fill the spaces we do the mara blinding then we have the dpm uh -huh. after the anti-termite treatment you remember you have to do the anti-termite treatment so after the anti-termite treatment we do the dpm after the dpm uh, dpm is the damp proof membrane that paper paper uh-huh that we lay that polythene so after that we lay the concrete after doing the form work form work is laid all around the building so that you can support the concrete in place uh, as we do the concrete Alright, so we have now got the procedure. We'll just start. Uh, when we are doing the site clearance, uh, how do we measure it? We shall take the external dimensions of the uh, plan. Then we shall add the spread. You see this spread here? You see this one? The foundation trench is 600. And the wall is at the center, which is 200. So this space that is left this side and this other space left this side, which are equal, they are called the foundation spread. Okay? So 600 minus 200, we shall get 400. 400 divided by 2, it's 200. So every side of the trench, we shall leave a spread. It is spreading out 200. So when we are doing site clearance, we, sh we shall consider that we shall do the trench. And it will involve the whole of 600. So when you are finding the perimeter of this building, okay, we shall have to add the spread or around on the outside why are we not ending in the inside because the spread on the inside will be you see there it is under the hard core it is already considered it's in the building the one that was not considered when we take the external dimensions of the bu building is the spread on the outside so we shall take the total external dimensions of the length which is 200 plus 600 plus 200 plus 4000 plus 200 uh-huh we shall get 10 200 uh huh, 10200 for 6000 plus 400 plus 200, 10200. Then we shall add these walls 400, okay? Uh huh, then we shall add the projection 200 on each side, so it we add another 400. So the total length for length is 11,000. Good, so now we shall go to width. The width is 
6200 if you add all these dimensions you'll get 6200 plus 400 then we add the projection this side 200 and the projection the other side you can see that we have assumed this diagram is a rectangle by taking 11,000 and 7,000 remember when we are entering the uh, dimensions in the dimension column we would write them to two decimal places and in terms of meters okay that's why there's a difference between 11,000 11,000 here shall be 11.00 7,000 shall be 7.00 because when we are booking them uh, we do them in terms of meters there's a video that we have done to show how you enter dimensions into a takeoff sheet kindly look for it if you're new to this thing if you're a beginner kindly go look for that video so that it can explain to you how you fill this takeoff sheet okay all right the video is on your screen if you see that link just follow it go study then you'll come back okay so uh now that we have taken this uh this uh, plan is a rectangle. We shall need to come and deduct the void here. And before we go to deduct, uh, that was why I was just explaining why we are writing it as a rectangle. We shall then deduct this dimensions of this rectangle here. Now, uh, these ones are the dimensions where we shall clear the site of all bushes, okay, and other growth and burn all arising because we are told, uh, we, we have not been told that the th site is bushy. But as long as we are told the, the, the topsoil has not been removed, you can either in, put this part of clearing the site or you can just ignore it. Okay, then you are told excavate away 150 millimeters deep to remove vegetable soil. We are already told 150 millimeters. I have already explained how you, uh, you remove the vegetable soil um, in the area that you have cleared the site. So you shall remove it 150 millimeters deep then this soil after the vegetable soil we shall not use it to refill we shall uh, put it in a heap of soil that we call cut away this soil shall be taken away from the site an average of 100 millimeters distance just in case we will need some more soil from from this heap of soil called cut away we shall return it to another heap called refill and ram. But for now, just know there is a heap of soil called cut away. Now, on the same dimensions, we shall excavate in reduced level, commencing from stripped level. Stripped level is the one that we have removed the vegetable soil. An average of 135 millimeters deep and cut away from the site. I have already explained how you get the reduced level, whereby you just add the thicknesses of these layers so that you can get the total depth then you deduct above the ground and the strip level then you remain with the reduced level so you will need to reduce the level by another 135 millimeters so that you can get the uh, to the depth which is below the hardcore right so now we shall go to the void that i told you about we have assumed it's a rectangle but there is this area which is outside the building that we have already considered now we need to subtract this area so this area, the length, you can see from here, uh, external dimensions, to here, it's 4,000. When you add the wall, mm -hmm, it gets to 4,200. The width is 2,000 plus 200, 2,200. Now, why are we booking 4.2 and 2.2? I will use my pen to show you very clearly. Mm, we shall just, uh-huh, we shall just extend... Now, when we said that we shall add the projection, assuming the projection was added to this one, assuming this length that I've added is only 200 millimeters, I know it looks big, but assuming this is just 200 millimeters more, uh -huh. when we come to the void, remember that this, uh, we need this space for the, um, for the projection, for the spread, so we shall allow for the spread this way up to here so the void will be extended to only up to here let me shade for you where the void the dimensions of the void will be it will be like this only up to here so what is the dimensions of this rectangle the dimensions of that rectangle shall be mm -hmm, I will use my pen from here from here up to here it was 4000 now we have reduced it by 200 but we have increased it by 200 another 200 
all right the dimensions of the spread you remember the spread was coming up to outside the outside this wall the external wall okay so from 4000 was from the external outside the external wall here up to inside the wall 4000 we have reduced it by 200 because of the spread of this wall here i will use my yellow highlighters to show you what i'm talking about mm -hmm. no uh-huh i will mark this this wall here it has a spread of 200 let me take my time and explain to you uh this wall here has a spread of 200 so the spread will get up to here if it gets up to here and from uh, the external wall up to the end of the internal wall here it was 4000 so it shall be 4000 minus 200 then it has extended outside the wall with another 200 so the spread is outside the external wall so it shall be 4000 minus 200 that's 800 plus 200 for the wall that one is obvious so that's 800 plus 200 is 4,000. Then add for the spread. Okay, another 200. So it shall be 4,200. I hope that is clear. 4,200 is for the length. And the width is 2,000. Because the width from outside the external wall up to uh, the 2,000 was here. 2,000, mm -hmm. it's the same concept. The wind uh, from, let me rub so that you can be able to see, uh, the wind for the, yes, now it, it is visible, okay. The wind was 2,000 from here, I will use my red pen for visibility, uh, the wind was 2,000 from here up to here. Now this 2,000 we need to subtract for the foundation spread, 200. Okay, when we subtract 200, 2000 minus 200, we need to come and add 200 outside because of the spread that we had already assumed using the rectangle that we had uh, measured. So it will be 2000 minus 200 plus 200 plus 200. It will be 2200. Kindly uh, just replay it. Kindly just check again and again and you'll be able to understand. It's a concept that you need to absorb slowly. But once you get it, it will be easy for you. So that's why we shall book here 4.2 and 2.2. Deduct ditto the last three items on the void. The last three items is site clearance, removing the vegetable soil, and reducing the level. Now we shall excavate for the foundation trench. Uh, the foundation trench, when we are excavating, we need to calculate the center line. That is the center line of these uh-huh these walls you see the center line of the trench this is the trench here the trench is 600 millimeters wide to find the center of that trench it shall be 600 divided by 2 which is 300 remember we said this spread is 200 the wall is 200 and the spread on the other side is 200 so where does the 300 mark lie the 300 mark lies at the center of the wall so if we find the center line of the trench it will be the same as the center line for the wall once we find the center line we shall multiply by the width then we multiply by the uh, the thickness of the uh, concrete uh, if you want to know how to calculate center line there is a link at the top end of the screen uh, the right hand top kindly click on that link you'll be able to see in detail how to calculate the center line of such a shape a recess at the corner so we shall take the length 11,000 the width 6,000 the perimeter will be 34,000 then we shall deduct number of corners times uh, the thickness of the trench so 4 times 600 is 2400 so that 4,000 minus 2400 is that one 600 that is the center line of the trench now we shall go to the trench depth how do we calculate the trench depth first we shall add all these layers here to know first of all what is the uh, depth of the reduced level 
Uh -huh. This is how you find the reduced level. For those who did not understand what I had said, you shall take 100 millimeters of concrete. It's here. Uh, 75 millimeters blinding plus hard code return millimeters. So the total thickness of the layers is for 85. Then for 85, we shall reduce 200, which is above the ground. So how much deeper do we need to excavate uh, under the ground is 285. We already removed 150. Uh, when we did, we excavated the vegetable soil. So how much uh, deep do we reduce the level so that we can be able to lay the hard core? It shall be 285 minus 150, which is 135. All right, so... Uh, so that we can be able to get the depth of the trench, we need to excavate. You know, see, we know we excavate from the ground, from the reduced level. But here in the diagram, we have been given the depth from the ground level to the concrete is 1850, concrete 150 plus the blinding 50. We need to know the total depth from the ground level to below the concrete, which is 1850 plus 150 plus 50 we get to 50 if it's to 50 and we had already reduced the level and excavated to top soil by to 85 uh, so the total depth that we need to excavate is 1765 we excavate in ridges of 1.5 meters so the first stage we shall excavate 1.5 the second stage we shall excavate the remainder which is 265 then we are told rock level is 1000 millimeters from the ground so if the total depth from the ground level to below the the foundation is 2050 and the rock starts a thousand from the ground level so the what depth shall we excavate the rock it shall be 2050 minus 1000 we get 10 50 millimeters now and when you're coming to booking we shall take the center line of the uh, foundation might we multiply by the width of the trench we multiply by the first stage which is 1.5 excavate foundation trenches commencing at reduced level not exceeding 1.5 meters deep and refill and run the next stage uh, the whose depth is 0 0.27 we shall excavate foundation stretch trenches commencing from 1.5 meters deep all right after the strip level eh? and not exceeding three meters deep so that one we shall write uh that the 1.60 is the center line times the wind of the trench times the remainder of the depth then the rock which usually excavated this extra over excavation on rock so we shall write the center line of the trench the wind of the trench and the depth of the rock that shall be excavated then the rocks do we need them no we shall cut away from the sides all right so we now shall take off pranking and stretching to sides of the excavation trenches and keeping the trenches free from water. That one we usually do it as an item because this one, uh huh, this one we cannot be able to uh, measure it from the drawings. Okay, in other countries they measure it from the drawings, whereby you find the area of the formwork all around. But in our country, using the SMM, we just write item whereby when you just write item in the bq will just provide a provisional sum for that one okay now we shall go to 50 millimeters concrete blinding under the con under the this thick layer of concrete there's this blinding 50 millimeters how do we take it off we find it in square meters so we shall take the center line and the uh, thickness of the um and the center line and the width of the trench which is 0 0.6 meters then we shall say 50 millimeters blinding. The thickness of the blinding, we shall write it in the description column. 50 millimeters concrete blinding, which one is to 3 is to 6 in foundation strip. Then this, conc this concrete has replaced the soil. So what do we do to the soil that was in the heap of referent ram? We shall deduct it. Then we shall multiply by this one to convert it into volumes because soil we deal with it in volume. Then that volume of soil, we shall add it to cut away. We don't need the soil inside again because it has been replaced by the concrete. Very good. So we shall go to uh, mass concrete in foundation trenches. This concrete that you can see here, how do we take it off? We shall just take the center line, the width of the trench, and the thickness of the concrete. Mass concrete ratio 1 is to 3 is to 6 in foundation trench and deduct, refill and ram and add cut away because this concrete will replace the soil. So we don't need the soil anymore. We shall, we shall deduct it from the heap of soil that was to be 
to be used to refer and ram and we shall add it to cut away so that you can say that soil we don't need any more in the site you can take it away all right so the height of the foundation wall we need now to build the wall how do we uh, take off the wall we find the area of the wall the area is measured by taking the depth times the thick the depth and the length all right the length is the center line of the wall we had already found the center line which is that 1.6 what depth is the wall the foundation wall and above the ground we shall take 1850 plus 200 is the total wall we deduct concrete which is 100 i know that is clear so 1950 millimeters so the center line times the depth of the wall we find the area of the wall 200 millimeters thick stone walling in cement sand ratio one is to three uh, motor joints okay so now we shall go to height of foundation walling uh-huh for height of foundation walling we shall calculate up to the reduced level so that we can know the volume of the wall that has replaced the volume of the soil because we need to refill and ram this soil up to the reduced level okay so uh if it's up to the reduced level we shall take the height of the wall up to the reduced level then we shall take it, the volume of that wall so that we can say that volume of the wall has replaced the volume of the soil so we shall take the soil that was in refill and ram we shall deduct it equal to the volume of the wall and add it to cut away we do not need that soil anymore because the soil where it was has been replaced by the wall okay so uh that we shall take foundation wall plus above the ground above the ground is 150 uh-huh the foundation wall is 1850 then we shall add foundation wall is 1850 uh-huh then we shall add 200 to get the total height of the wall up to the top of the uh oversight concrete so the total height of the wall and the concrete shall be 1850 plus 200 that is 2050 then uh we shall deduct the concrete the oversight concrete the blinding 75 then the hard code return so the total depth that has remained is 485 so this 485 is the one uh -huh, that we need to deduct from this total depth from of the wall 2050 minus 4, 4 minus 485 we get 1565 so this is the depth of the wall below the reduced level that we replace the soil so center line times the thickness of the wall times the depth below the reduced level of the wall which will replace the soil we take that volume of soil remember this one is representing the volume of soil that will be replaced by the wall so we shall deduct from refill and ram and add to cut away so uh, now we shall go to uh, laying the hard core the hard core is always laid inside the walls so we shall take the total um, assuming uh, this is a rectangle we shall take the length inside the walls uh-huh then we shall deduct for the void so the length we shall take it internal dimensions internal dimensions it will be 6000 plus 200 plus 4000 it shall be 12 10 200 then uh the width shall be uh 2000 plus 200 plus 4000 it shall be uh 6 200 then uh, the the depth of the hard core 0 0.31 then we shall deduct for the void you see uh we are not laying hard coal where there is this wall so we shall include this wall up to here so the length shall be 4000 plus 200 4.2 then for the wind it shall be 2000 plus 200 for this wall it shall be 2.2 then the depth of the hard code deduct detail on void okay so now we shall go to 50 millimeters of uh, maram blinding the maram blinding shall be on top of the hard core so they shall take the internal dimensions again which is 10 200 the internal dimensions of the width then we deduct for the void just like the hard core uh, we deduct void on void the last two items which are maram blinding and uh had anti-termite treatment all right 
now we shall go to the DPM and the oversight concrete. The DPM shall be laid even where we have the walls. So the dimensions that we gave for the hard cone, we shall add the walls. So here we shall just take 200 plus 6,000 plus 200 plus 4,000 plus 200, which is 10,600, the external dimensions. The external dimensions of the wing it's 7,000, which comes from 200 plus 2,000 plus 200 plus 4,000 plus 200. We get 7,000. So, uh, th then we shall deduct for the void. If we have already measured the external dimensions like this, like this, mm -hmm. sorry, it shall be, <laughs> should be the external dimensions. Use the external wall. Mm -hmm. All right, so we shall deduct for the void without considering the wall because on top of the wall there will be there will be DPM and there will be concrete. So what is this? We shall have 4,000 plus 200 because the wall is included. Then for the wind, 2,000 plus 200. So it shall mean 4,000, 4.2 and 2.2. All right, so now we shall do the formwork. How do we measure the formwork? The formwork is... On the you measure the external dimensions we usually hammer it on the walls outside you find this perimeter okay for the length what, what do we take 200 plus 6000 plus 200 plus 4000 plus 200 we get 10.6 we multiply by two sides two length because it's this side mm -hmm. then we have this other side this one and this one makes a complete length for the wind, you shall take this side, makes one wind, then this one, and this one makes a complete wind. That's why we are multiplying by two. So, 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 so formwork uh, to the vertical edges of the oversight concrete. And that is the end of our video. Uh -huh. Before we get to the end, we have the center line of reinstatement. We need to come and reinstate the soil all around the building. Remember we had excavated for the the vegetable soil and we reduced the level. Now we need to return the soil so that it can be like a normal ground up to this uh, ground level. We need to return the soil up to the ground level. You see this uh -huh, here, it was in the spread. So we need to come and return. You know we had returned the soil up to here, the reduced level. Now we need to come and return this soil that I will highlight in yellow or around the building. So how do we calculate for that volume of soil? We shall take the center line of reinstatement, which is, uh, we shall take the center of this spread here. You see here, it's the center of this spread. We go all around. So we shall take the external dimensions of this diagram. We take the external dimensions. External is up to there. We add the spread, both sides. Now, when we are adding the spread, we shall add a half. And we already learned how to take off uh, the center line using uh, the video that is on your screen. Um, it shows how to calculate the center line. We said we take the external dimensions of the spread. So we shall take the external dimensions of the uh, plan. We add the spread. We get the external dimensions of the spread. Then we deduct how number of corners times times the thickness of the uh, spread. Remember the thickness of the spread is 200 here. Yeah. So uh, these corners, where we get them from is, you take the number of external corners minus the number of internal corners. Which ones? External corners, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We deduct number of internal corners, which is 1. And we remain with 4. Four corners, we multiply by the thickness of the foundation spread, we get 800, so 34,000 minus 800, we get 33,200. So center line, we multiply by the thickness of the spread, then the depth up to the reduced level. We deduct this load of soil from cut away and add it to refill and ramp. We had said that all vegetable soil should be taken uh, to the soil here called cut away. Now we need that soil to come and return that soil. So that it can go back to the ground level. We shall deduct that load of soil from the cutaway and add to refill and run. So that 
brings us to the end of the video in case you like this video kindly remember to give it a thumbs up kindly kindly give it a thumbs up then in case you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel all right so uh feel free to share this video kindly share it to your cosmates bring them on board and we are happy to make these videos for you so anyone who had whoever had asked this question who has told us to do a simple takeoff for you this one is a simple one i hope it helps you after this one go graduating uh, learning how to take off and sure enough you'll be able to take off in the easiest way possible so see you in the next video